All right, today we are going to see how the CSS has function uh, can be used to make your HTML forms even better. So if I open up this sort of uh, state selector and put the focus visible state, I can go up to the form control and I can see that when the form control has uh, and inside of the control, it has an input or any element, I guess, that has focus visible and that element is invalid. So in this case, that's only going to be inputs or we're only gonna have inputs in this control anyway. Uh, but we can see that when this control has the input and the input has a focus visible state and the input has an invalid state, then it's going to color this entire form control red or tomato. And that is going to propagate down to the label and it's going to propagate down to the uh, control input div which is going to set the outline color to red and the border color and it's going to propagate to the input which doesn't have any text so we can we can't actually see the text color but it's also going to color this SVG so this SVG isn't normally red now like I said you could kind of accomplish something similar using uh, focus states and the invalid state and using the entire input as the form control instead of having the wrapping div and then you wouldn't have an inline SVG and you probably could use like some padding and some background to put those SVGs in there as background images but that actually becomes more difficult to do because in this case having the SVG in the DOM gives us some nice features to be able to animate it or it can inherit things like the color so having those in the DOM is definitely a benefit which we can only do if we are using something like the has function. Actually, that's not quite true. We could also do it if we were using JavaScript, but it's something we can only do with just CSS if we have the has function. So for example, if we wanted to have this special SVG in the DOM anytime that we have an email input, uh, it's kind of nice to have that because it can also inherit the colors instead of having to do some sort of background image trick. So let me fill these out and we'll just call this uh, Hey, at unlostinguild.com. And then uh, it also works on selects. So we have this same sort of inline validation uh, logic while this select is focused. If I tab out of it, and this works with uh, keyboards as well. Um, the only thing I wanna show about selects is if you're going to do this sort of approach where we uh, modify the color of the bounding parent, uh, I did have to reset the options, otherwise they would be red and then green when I have a valid state. Uh, let me go and undo the status on this one so that we don't have that there. Cool, looking good. Okay, so one thing that the has function unlocks is inline form validation. Pretty cool. Not something you want to rely on entirely because for accessibility reasons, you may still wanna have some sort of validation uh, that sh tells the user what's wrong, but it is nice to have as they're going through the form, maybe. The next cool thing I wanted to showcase is the ability to show and hide different parts of the DOM using the has selector as well. So if we look down here further, we can see a field set with radios and checkboxes. And I just wanted you to focus on this little white space down below. As I select these, we can see uh, these DOM nodes being uh, shown or hidden, even for all the different checkboxes. So let's see what's going on there. So we have this div with this class of results inside of which we have this uh, paragraph with the results options. And we can see that by default, it's kind of set to display none. But when we have this super complicated uh, CSS selector, I'll kind of walk through it really quick. We can see when the form has, and then we check whether this radio one is checked or radio two is checked or radio three is checked, then we will change this result options to be display block. So when any of these uh, inputs with these IDs of radio one, radio two, or radio three are checked. We change that to display block. And then inside of there, we also have a span corresponding to each radio result. 
And we can also see that when the form has radio one that is checked, uh, then we are going to show this uh, option result for radio one. And that's also gonna be set to display block. So if we change that to radio two, we still show the result, but then we only show the span with the result here. And the same way, the same thing works for these checkboxes. So I think that's super cool because before the has selector, that's something that you would have had to rely on JavaScript to do or do some sort of weird combination or hacky thing with uh, CSS combinators or sibling selectors, which really depends on how the DOM is structured and really limits you. But here, uh, we can just use the form and say, hey, if the form has this input checked anywhere within it, then also show or hide this element that also is somewhere within the form, which is awesome. Okay, so here's the next thing that I kind of wanted to show. And here's where we have uh, a couple of different cards that you can check what your favorite uh, front end uh, programming language is and let's look at the markup on these we can see that let's see we have a row of cards we have an individual card inside of which there's an SVG and then a label for the title and then that label is associated with the input now this input is going to be visually hidden meaning it's in the DOM it's accessible to uh, assistive technology and keyboard users, but it's not going to be visible. And then we also have a little paragraph after that. But what I really want to focus on here is the actual uh, highlighting of this card when the input is selected. So by clicking the label, we know that we activate the input. And when the input is selected, uh, we can go to this card and see what's going on here. So we're going to go to every element with the class of card, but we're going to choose just the one that has the HTML input or the input with the ID of HTML and that is checked. And we're gonna give that one a box shadow of this inset. And that's really nice. It's basically saying, hey, this card, uh, when the input inside of it that has the ID of HTML, when this one is checked, only this card is going to get the styles that we are defining here. And the same style can be applied to the CSS one or the JavaScript one. Okay, now this example was actually pretty easy to do before the has selector, but there was a limitation to how you structured your DOM and you had to use CSS combinators that still felt a little bit more difficult. So while this example is probably the easiest to live without the has selector, having it around still makes our lives easier and makes this uh, UI pretty cool and available. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show off today is uh, you see how this form has this button that has a little bit of opacity change and this not allowed uh, cursor. Well, if I go and I check this input, we can see that now that submit button looks normal and it looks like I can click it, so that's great. So let's figure out what's going on there. Let's look at the submit button and we can see uh, when everything looks good, it's fine. But if I remove this checkbox, what's going on? Well, this checkbox here is required. So if it's not checked, this form is going to be invalid. Uh, and that means with the has selector, we can create some rules that say, uh, when we have a form that has any input that is invalid, so this whole form, Let's go and find the buttons that either do not have the type defined or have the type defined to submit because those are going to be the buttons that can submit the form. And let's set the opacity of those to 0 0.7 and put the cursor not allowed. So that's pretty cool. When I have a valid form, I can show my button is ready to go. When I have an invalid form, I can show that my button is not ready. Now, one thing that I want to point out here is that this only affects the visual style of the button. It doesn't actually prevent users from being able to click that button and submit it. And I think that's a good thing because after all, if we want those built-in HTML validators to run, users have to be able to click the button. So I don't think the has function is going to actually be useful for actually validating your forms, but it is nice to add some sort of visual uh, cues to users that are looking at your form uh, while they're filling it out. In conclusion, the has function allows us to do a lot of really cool, new, fancy UI things that we could do before with JavaScript, but it's really nice not to have to ship more JavaScript to users and still be able to have these nice user experiences. So I'm pretty excited that we have it available. Uh, I hope that you like this video and 
And if you do, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you have any other ideas or interesting ways to use has, especially in, in forms, but doesn't have to be, then let me know in the comments and I would love to see what sort of cool stuff you are building with it.